Newly ousted GOP House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has announced through a Wall Street Journal piece that he's quitting. He is resigning from his position as a member of the Republican Party in the House of Representatives. He won't even serve out the remainder of his term. So now the narrow majority Republicans enjoy in the House is about to get even narrower. And there are some Republicans speaking out against what McCarthy has decided to do here, namely Marjorie Greene. So we'll get to her in just a moment, but first some details. So the piece that Kevin McCarthy published is in the Wall Street Journal. It's titled, I'm leaving the house, but not the fight. My work is only getting started in my next chapter. Now keep in mind, he he's quitting before his term is even over. So it's hilarious to frame this as I'm a fighter and I am going to fight for you, even though my constituents in Central California, voted for me and trusted me to at least serve out my term, but I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna quit. So in it, um, he writes the following. I will continue to recruit our country's best and brightest to run for elected office. The Republican Party is expanding every day, and I'm committed to lending my experience to support the next generation of leaders. It often seems that the more Washington does, the worse America gets. Okay, let's just pause for a second. No, 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 the problem is the endless gridlock in Washington. Unless there's an issue in which donors legally bribe members of both parties to get legislation passed. Typically, it's legislation having to do with more military funding. And when I say military funding, I'm not talking about money that goes into the pockets of the brave men and women who make up our military. I'm talking about the defense contractors who make money off of weapons of war and definitely benefit from increased military spending. The idea that, oh, it's just that. It's just that Washington's just doing too much. We've been doing too much and that's the problem is ridiculous. But let me continue. He continues to write, I started my career as a small business owner and I look forward to helping entrepreneurs. Oh, Kevin, you know you've been helping the business community your entire career. And risk takers reach their full potential. The challenges we face are more likely to be solved by innovation than legislation. And what I also found hilarious is that he subtly tried to call out corruption. And so he writes, despite the best attempts by special interest groups and the news media to divide us, I have seen the goodness of the American people. They are what will ultimately uphold the enduring values of our great nation. We all have a role to play in that effort. Now keep in mind the wonderful Americans that he purports to give a damn about are the same Americans who overwhelmingly wanted to reject Donald Trump's tax cuts for the rich. But he helped push that kind of legislation through, certainly in the House. He has gone against the will of the American people when it comes to various policy proposals throughout his entire career. And speaking of which, we should talk a little bit more about what the earlier years of his political career look like because he was part of a group of Republican lawmakers who like to call themselves the young guns. You know, The young guns 10 years ago had an interview with PBS. I'm gonna show you some excerpts of it. But before I do, let me give you more information about it. It included Eric Cantor, Paul Ryan, and yes, Kevin McCarthy. They even wrote a book about how they were you know, the rebels within the Republican Party in the House of Representatives. The young guns, the new generation of conservative leaders. Yeah, they're all gone now, every single one of them. But without further ado, let's get to know the young guns a little more. And this is again, an older interview. This is from 2010, let's watch. Young Guns, a new generation of conservative leaders, is a roadmap of sorts for how the GOP should govern if Republicans win control of the U.S. House of Representatives this fall. It's written by three up-and-coming Republican congressmen, Paul Ryan of Wisconsin, Eric Cantor of Virginia, and Kevin McCarthy of California. Is it? Did they? I mean, what a... It's amazing to look back at things because you know typically these types of stories they pop up every once in a while. I think you could say the same of the squad, right? It's a new group of lawmakers and they want to come in and you know shake up the system. They want to stir the pot. They really want to change things. And what's amazing about the young guns is that they really wanted to present themselves as further right more willing to serve as obstructionist to any type of democratic agenda. And I thought it's just so fascinating to see how 
in the end, they kind of got destroyed by the voters moving either even further to the right, further to the right of them. And I want to go to the next video because remember, McCarthy says, I'm going to continue to fight. And so in his words, that fight means I'm going to encourage people to run for office, I guess. Let's actually go back to that statement, again, published in the Wall Street Journal where he says, Graphic two, I will continue to recruit our country's best and brightest to run for elected office. That's what he said in the piece that he published in the Wall Street Journal just recently. Now let's go back 10 years and hear what he told PBS when he was one of the young guns. The whole concept of young guns is about ideas. What we've done is we've taken the brand of young guns that Fred Barnes gave us to go out across the country and find candidates that were willing to challenge Democrats based upon principles that would solve problems. Because um, you're right, we uh, talk about the wrong policies of the Democrats, but we also talk about the wrong policies that the Republicans have of why they got fired. So 10 years ago, similar goals to what he claims to have today. Which means like nothing's really changed with Kevin McCarthy. I don't think he's really sat to think about what his goals are or what he wants to accomplish or what he wants his legacy to be. One thing that I do know about Kevin McCarthy and other Republicans who have chosen to either resign or no longer seek public office, a lot of people are retiring, is that they see the Trump era of the Republican Party as incredibly difficult, dysfunctional. I mean, McCarthy experienced that firsthand in regard to the whole speakership debacle and how easily he was voted out by eight unruly, rebellious Republican members of Congress. And that was spearheaded by Representative Matt Gates, of course. And Matt Gates, you know, epitomizes what the MAGA wing of the Republican Party looks like. And that's really the dominant flavor of the Republican Party at the moment. And so it is shocking that in that in this current era, someone like Kevin McCarthy, who came onto the scene as the rebel, as the one who is gonna push the party further to the right, is now considered Someone who's not right wing enough to really get the support that Republican voters are willing to give to the more far right wing of the party, the MAGA wing of the Republican Party. So I don't begrudge him for wanting to quit, but I think it's a terrible move to just resign without serving out the rest of your term. It's unfair to his constituents and it's unfair to his Republican colleagues. And that's why Representative Marjorie Greene, who's actually been a fierce defender of McCarthy's, is kind of furious about this decision, she posts on X, formerly known as Twitter. Now in 2024, we will have a one seat majority in the House of Representatives. Congratulations, Freedom Caucus, for one and 105 representatives who expel our own for the other. I can assure you Republican voters didn't give us the majority to crash this ship. And then she signs off on that post by saying, Hopefully no one dies. I don't know what that last line is a reference to. I don't know what she means by that, but she's not happy. And the reason why she's referring to a single Republican member that gives them the majority is because since McCarthy has refused to serve out the remainder of his term, and since he is a representative out of the state of California, that means a Democratic governor, Gavin Newsom, is gonna handpick who his replacement is gonna be, or he's going to call for a special election. And so it's it doesn't look good for the Republican Party, that's for sure. And I do think that the Republican Party has a lot of trouble ahead because what they experience in the midterm election, I think is gonna maybe play out in some of these congressional races in 2024. And what I mean by that is, obviously Trump is going to endorse some of the candidates, the Republican candidates. And the people he tends to endorse are people just like him. They might do well in primaries, they might do well among you know hardcore Republican voters who are pro-MAGA. But once they get to a general election, independents aren't necessarily on board. And really a lot of these elections come down to those independent voters. So we'll see how this all plays out. But I can understand why someone like Marjorie Greene is frustrated over the decision that McCarthy made here. And by the way, I should also note that Representative Patrick McHenry, who briefly served as kind of like an interim House Speaker, he is also announcing that he's retiring at the end of his term. So he's not pulling a 
McCarthy by just resigning without serving the rest of his term. And McHenry again served as acting speaker during the three weeks in October following McCarthy's ouster. McCarthy will join the more than three dozen House members who have announced that they will not seek reelection in 2024 because they are either retiring or seeking other office. So, young guns. I guess they were gunning for trouble because each one of them is gone, including McCarthy. Thanks for watching the video, guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member. And members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence. And that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become one of the Young Turks.